Welcome back to our final week. I'm Daniel. And I'm Jana. And we've been looking at different conversations and encounters that Jesus had with people. We conclude our study by looking at John 4, where Jesus interacts with a Samaritan woman at a well. This woman was well known for her immoral lifestyle and was considered an outsider by society. But despite this, Jesus engaged with her in a meaningful conversation. Mm, what's truly remarkable is how Jesus demonstrated his love for all people, including those that were labeled sinners. He didn't condemn her, but he offered her something far greater than temporary fulfillment. Jesus challenges us to reflect on where we seek fulfillment. Like the woman at the well, we might be looking in the wrong places for satisfaction. Jesus invites us to find true contentment in Him and His love. As a group, take time to answer these questions. Feel free to pause the video for you to discuss. When you're ready, resume the video for the teaching. Hey, I'm Steve Ross. I'm the senior adult pastor. And as the senior adult pastor, that means that I'm probably been around a little longer than me. Yeah, most, most everybody here. So with that said, when I'm asked, uh, how do you live a fulfilled life? You know, in all honesty, most of my life, I didn't even know what that meant. If you go ask a hundred people, what does it mean for you to live a fulfilled life? You're going to get a hundred different perspectives. Most of them are probably blessings. Most of them probably could glorify the Lord. But sadly, you know, if you ask, how do you live a fulfilled life? You're going to hear, well, money, possessions, uh, power, prestige, position, family. I think a lot of people, including me, sought a fulfilled life through my, through my family. And, you know, my wife went home to be with the Lord in 2020, and I thought she fulfilled my life, but I was wrong. And, and I think that all of the different secular reasons and things that we pursue to fulfill our life, uh, I equate it to, have you ever watched a dog chase her tail? You know, they'll sit there and they'll start looking at their tail. And they'll glance over at their tail and they'll wiggle their tail. They'll look back and they'll go, and go I want it. And the next thing you know that you see them start to turn. And they start going around looking at their tail and they start going faster and faster and faster and faster until they fall down exhausted because they cannot ever catch their tail. They're chasing their tail. And I think that's the way it is with a fulfilled life. I think a lot of times because we are seeking self, we're seeking to glorify ourselves, that we chase our tail. I think we, we never, ooh, I want it. I want that tail. I want that wealth. I want that position. I want that promotion. But my motives and my heart are not correct. So I miss out on that fulfillment that the Lord intended for us. King Solomon was given supernatural wisdom. He prayed for it and asked for it. God granted him wisdom that no other man had had. And he accomplished more than any person in his time and probably anybody in creation. He had more beautiful wives. He had more palaces. He had more land. He had written more books. He created more scientific discoveries. He did more than any human had ever done. In the latter part of his life, he wrote in Ecclesiastes to his son. He said, son, the end of the matter when all's been heard, when all's been said, it was all vanity. It was all a wasted life. He wasn't fulfilled. He didn't live a fulfilled life. He chased the wind is what he calls it. You can't catch the wind any more than a dog can catch his tail. He said, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. That's what we we're created for. That was our purpose. Relationship with him. We are here to glorify him, not here to glorify me. So when we start looking at how to live a fulfilled life, let's go to scripture. We've looked at secular reasons for how we fulfill we possibly could fulfill our life, but let's let's go to fil Scripture. The words are not important because I can't even speak English. I speak some form of Texan, much less Hebrew or Greek. In seminary, I took 15 hours of it, and it doesn't matter. I still can't say it correctly. But the word mala in Hebrew is used throughout the entire Old Testament when he's talking about fulfilling prophecy. When things are fulfilled, they use that one word. And that word is important for us to understand that it means complete. It means to be finished. The Greek word 
synonymous with the Hebrew word, which Jesus would use was plerau. And that word means to complete. And here's the cool part. It means to render perfect. Jesus said in Matthew 5, he was being chastised by the Pharisees for not keeping the law. And he said, I came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets. He play raud. He rendered them perfect. See, Jesus fulfilled the penalty of the law and the prophets for us by his death on the cross. When Jesus died on that cross, it was the pinnacle of all creation. Everything that was created up to that point was prophesied as coming Messiah who would die for the salvation of the world, restore man back to him. And on that cross, all time led up to that moment on the cross when Jesus said, it is finished. He fulfilled the law and the prophecy at that point. Whenever he died, he said, it is finished. The word is, it was complete. So that we know at that point, because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, that to live a fulfilled life, all the prophecies that are to happen are true and dependable. And we know that what God said will happen. Jesus said when he died, it is finished. All things are complete, fulfilled, made perfect in Christ. Therefore, we can only be fulfilled and have a fulfilled life when we are in Christ. We're only fulfilled in Christ whenever we put him first, when we seek his glory Jesus said, abide in me and my words will abide in you. And we need to do that in all of our pursuits if we want a fulfilled life. John 15, 8 says, By this my Father is glorified, that you may bear much fruit and so prove to be his disciples. We're only fulfilled in Christ. According to Matthew 6, 20, he said, Lay for yourself treasures in heaven where moth nor rust destroys, where feasts do not just break in and steal, but where your treasure is, your heart will be open. See, if we look at this from an eternal perspective, everything that we do here on earth, everything that we do on here on earth should glorify him. 1 Corinthians 3, 14 through 15, Paul said, if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, the foundation is the gospel of Jesus Christ. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation of the gospel survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, your pursuits, pursuits, your deeds, the things that you seek to fulfill your life, if they are burned up, you'll suffer loss, though himself will be saved, but only through fire. So you see, fulfillment in life is really a hard issue. Do I serve me or I serve the Lord? We need to embrace this eternal truth that our relationship with God through Jesus Christ is the only way that we can live a fulfilled life. I'm going to repeat that. Our intimacy, our relationship by putting the Lord first in everything in our life is the only way that you can live a fulfilled life, a complete life, a perfect life. Looking back on my life, I look at all the things that I had passion for, the things that I was hungry for. I wanted to promote. I wanted to be the fire chief. I wanted to be the best firefighter. I wanted to be a great dad. I wanted to, I cherished my life with Deanna. And all of those things, I probably did not live as a full, fulfilled life as I could have because a lot of them were self-serving. It is Solomon said to his son, he said that, um, Remember your creator in your youth. Remember that the only fulfillment, the only completion, the only perfection is whenever we live for him in everything we do. We only come complete in Christ when we delight in him first in everything. He will take our desires. He will take our passions. He will take everything that we desire and he'll make them his passions and desires for us. Then we can truly live a fulfilled, complete life. So let's take a few minutes now in our life groups and let's talk about some of those things, people, events, circumstances that we have a passion for and how are the some of the ways that it prevent us from experiencing fulfilled lives. God bless.